Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you get an opportunity to watch this. Uh, we're in week 15 of the lockdown. I think this is the 13th episode of Comic Cuts on video uh, for July the 3rd, 2020. Um, uh, frankly, the only difference between this and the first is that I have actually managed to have a haircut. Uh, we had a roving barber come round over the weekend. It does feel a lot better, I must admit. Um, the hair was falling and it could reach down to the end of my nose. Uh, and I was looking a little too shaggy. Uh, I'm not uh, particularly um, conscious of that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't tend to worry me, but it just feels a lot better. Um, we're having some uh, not bad weather at the moment, and uh, it just feels much nicer to have the uh, have the old hair trimmed a bit. That's the big news, I'm afraid. <laughs> the uh, the two longbow books are going fine. Uh, in fact, I'm rather pleased with the uh, progress that we've been making. Um, I've started on the layouts. Um, I've got a rough skeleton of the uh, two volumes. Uh, which are approximately 130 pages each. Uh, I've still got to put in place, there's a, a little bonus piece that I want to put in place. The introduction is almost written, um, but I thought I'd take an opportunity uh, to see if I could identify uh, one of the authors of the strip. The strip, when it originally appeared in Swift, was, uh, at first, it was a redrawn reprints of an old strip. This ran for about 15 weeks, and then with week 16, it became newly written stories. So all I was hoping to do was to identify the author who had written these new stories. Now, the initial stories were written by Mike Butterworth, uh, who should need no introduction. He wrote The Trigon Empire. Uh, I've reprinted a number of his works through Bear Alley books, including Eagles Over the Western Front. Um, he's one of the best, biggest names of British comics and uh, one of the best writers that we had. So uh, it's always interesting to see if there's more of his work around that we know nothing about. And what I tried to do was do a style analysis of the use of certain words. So um, Longbow shouts out, Hoka hey, yeah, and... Um, various other phrases that are repeated throughout. Um, with the move into new stories, I noticed, for instance, that uh, where Hoka Hey Ya had been used in early stories, it tended now just to be Hoka Hey. Um, other uh, uh, phrases were introduced into the uh, uh, new section, by Thunder, by Manito, um, other odds and ends that you think, well, you know, there's not as much difference between the first batch and the later batch for me to say that it's not still Mike Butterworth writing the stories. You know, the uh, the minor changes may be that his uh, writing style had evolved slightly in the years between writing Strongbow the Mohawk and writing the Longbow stories. What I can say uh, fairly definitively is that the stories were not written by um, Kelman Frost, who had been writing westerns for Swift prior to uh, Longbow appearing, and they were not written by uh, Ted Cowan. Uh, Edward G. Cowan was the author of uh, Blackbow the Cheyenne when Swift merged with Eagle. And uh, Cowan was the uh, long-standing author of Blackbow. But clearly he took over the writing of the strip uh, when the two papers merged. So although it, there's still a little bit of a mystery about who wrote the new Swift stories, um, it was either Mike Butterworth or somebody doing a close approximation of Butterworth, which makes me wonder if it might have been someone like Andy Vincent who has form as a writer of westerns. Uh, he was an editor at Amalgamated Press. He worked for um, a Super Detective Library, for instance, um, but was also writing for Cowboy Picture Library. 
So uh, it may be him. Uh, Val Holding, who was then editor of Eagle and Swift, it may have been him. My money is on Mike Butterworth picking up the reins. Uh, he would have been known to Val Holding. He would have been known to Andy Vincent. Um, so there's a good chance that he was able to pick up uh, the reins of writing the story when they needed new stories. But I'm not 100% certain, so I'm not going to include Mike's name on the books. Uh, but I may include a little note in the introduction that uh, there's a strong suspicion that the uh, stories are still the work of Mike Butterworth, who was certainly the author of some of the stories. It's this kind of research that has meant that the books have been fairly slow off the ground. I actually spent a whole day rereading the stories and looking for clues as to who might have written them. And uh, that's another day lost, in a sense, uh, because I didn't actually manage to reach a conclusion. You know, not a 100% conclusion, anyway. But uh, it's the sort of research that I actually enjoy doing. And uh, I, th I think it's usually worth doing. Um, sometimes it's fairly easy to identify a writer. I, I, something I recently did, for instance, was uh, go through uh, quite a lengthy period of Roy of the Rovers trying to identify the first strips written by Tom Tully. Uh, Tom Tully is another of my favourite authors of British comics, and I was intrigued and interested to find out when he actually started writing Roy the Rovers. And I'm pretty sure, I am 99% sure, in fact, that I've identified the first of his strips. So uh, it is worth doing. It can be a lot of fun, obviously, because I get to read some comics, uh, which I enjoy doing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, uh, in this instance, didn't quite work out as as best as I'd hoped. Um, as I said, I'm I'm 80 percent, call it 80 percent sure that the stories were picked up by uh, Mike Butterworth. I'll try and uh, see if uh, it fits into his known work, uh, where it would fit in with his known work. And um, yeah, I may mention it in the introduction. I may not. Otherwise, uh, this is the mention. This is the mention of Mike Butterworth writing those stories. So I'm going to continue with the layouts over the next few days. Um, I'm going to start dropping the artwork into place uh, now that I've got the uh, skeletal uh, structure of the books. I'll finalise the introduction. We have an introduction to the second book, or rather I should say it's an outroduction, because it takes the story beyond the uh, reprints from Swift that we're publishing and uh, will uh, reveal some of the history of Black Bow, the Cheyenne, uh, when the two papers merged, uh, the strip continued into Eagle. And that is written by Steve Winders, uh, whose name you'll recognise if you are a fan of Eagle Times. So that's now uh, completed, and uh, I'll be able to drop that in place next week. I'm also going to include a feature that ran in Swift called Along Indian Trails, which was supposedly introduced by Blackbow the Cheyenne, now Longbow, of course. So I'm going to include those as well. Uh, this is going to increase the page count a little bit. It'll be over 130 pages. I'm not planning to increase the price. Um, as far as I can tell, I can hold the price at 13.99 for each volume. And uh, obviously, when the books come out, I'll try and offer a bit of a discount for people ordering both volumes, as well as combining the uh, postage costs. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to offer that within the next couple of weeks. I'll be able to firm up a uh, release date and we may be able to even start taking advance orders. So uh, as I said, hopefully we can uh, give a little offer to our regular readers who pre-order our books. I've been concentrating on the Longbow books so much that uh, I don't really have a great deal of news on any other projects. I've been in touch with the artist who's doing the covers for the Gwyn Evans books and seen some uh, very rough sketches of what he has planned. I'm rather pleased with the way his mind is working uh, for these books. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward as much as anybody to seeing what the results are going to be. The uh, the magazine stroke bookazine project, I haven't had a chance to think about. 
But there is some continuing research going on. For instance, uh, over the last couple of weekends, I've been uh, doing a little bit of research into Adam Eterno and Jana Stark, um, trying to identify uh, fill-in artists. So that sort of research continues. Um, I try and do a little bit at least every day, um, just to keep everything ticking over. And some of these bits of research will resurface in upcoming projects. I think that's all the news I have for this week. Uh, hopefully we'll have more news next week. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity just to say thank you to everybody who's uh, made it this far through uh, the video comic cuts and uh, who continue to watch. I started doing these fairly close to the beginning of lockdown because I wanted to do something different um, and something a little more entertaining uh, than just simply writing the uh, regular weekly column. Uh, yes, I've enjoyed doing these for the last few months and uh, I'll continue as best I can. Um, I have uh, plans to uh, do some more interviews, uh, but it may take uh, a bit of uh, a better equipment to do those. Uh, uh, we recorded the first few through Skype and um, I've had some struggles with Skype uh, not working uh, with a couple of conversations that I've had with people. Um, the quality has not been that good. So uh, I've kind of put, I've had to put the interviews on hold, but uh, fingers crossed they'll, they will be back. Um, it's certainly something that I plan to uh, uh, return to um, whenever I can um, so uh, I will see you all next week in the meantime do stay safe and uh, I shall talk to you again soon alright bye <laughs>